Hi all, welcome to this quick tutorial on how to configure WSO2 API Manager 3.2 with Keyclock ID. In this session, we will see how to configure Keyclock and how to configure API Manager to connect with Keyclock and finally how to invoke an API using the token generated from Keyclock. First, uh, let's configure the Keyclock. First, let's log into the administration console in Keyclock. As the first task, we need to create a scope. So go to the configuration section and select the client scope. And let's create one. So I'll create the scope name default. Now let's create a client application. This application will be used by WSO2 API manager to connect with Keyclock. Go to the configuration section and select the clients. And create a client. I'll name it as API client. So once you save it, you will be redirected to this configuration page. So let's configure this. First, change the access type. Select the drop down menu and select confidential. This will enable another hidden field service account enable. So enable this one as well. Then you have to configure the valid redirect URLs. Since API manager and key clock are running on a local machine, my URLs are localhost. So I'll put the local host URL here. And finally, you have to configure the token timeout value. So I'll put a high value here. And save this. So these are the configuration related to this, this page. Now configure the other pages as well. Go to the client scope tab. And add the scope we created previously. Then go to the service account role and also add the admin role as well. Now the client is configured. Let's go to the API manager section. Now let's configure the WSO2 API manager to connect with Keyclock. For that, uh, first log into the admin portal. Under the key manager section, you can add a new key manager. So let's add key manager and fill these forms. Under the key manager types, you can select key clock. Then you can fill the other relevant endpoints manually. But uh, if you know the well-known URL of the IDP, you can fill these endpoints using that. For example, for key clock, you have this URL as the well-known address. I put it here and select endpoint. As you can see, all these endpoints get populated. But these two URLs you have to add it manually. And then under the connector configuration, you have to provide the client ID and secret of the application you created previously. So for that, let's go to the Keyclock admin console. And under the settings, you can find the client ID. So I'll paste it. And for the client secret, in the credential section, you will find the secret. So I will paste it here. So uh, you can find out other information for these properties in the official documentation. Here I have put this tip out of band provisioning. So we can import the client's application created in a key clock for into the API and the dev portal. If you tick, tick this one. So I'll show this in the demo as well. So now save it. So now we have configured the key clock. Let's create an API and then invoke it using a token from the key clock. Let's log into the publisher portal and create an API. I'll create a sample API and show you how we can invoke that API using a token from the key clock. Now the API is published. You can configure which key manager to be used with the API. For that, go to the runtime configuration and select application level security. Under the key manager configuration, you can configure this one. For example, you can select key clock or resident key manager or set allow all. 
Once you are change it, save the API. Now API is published and configured. Let's see how we can invoke this API. Now we are in the dev portal. First, let's log into the dev portal. Now you can create an application. You can go to the two tokens. Here you can see the key clock IDP. Previously I said that you can import existing application to API manager. For that, click provide existing auth keys. Here you can fill the consumer key and secret from the application you created in a IDP. Today I will register the application from the dev portal and get the token from here. Fill the required field if needed and click the generate keys. Here you get the token from key cloud. Let's copy it. If you decode this token, you can see it is coming from the key cloud. Let's subscribe to the API and invoke this. For that, click the API and select subscribe. You will find the application you created previously here. So let's subscribe. And let's try out the API. I'll paste the token I got previously. And let's see what the API. As you can see, you can now invoke the API using the token you got from the IDP. That's all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching.